Hello, I'm Charles Moffat, and today I'm going to be reviewing A Wizard of Ursa by Ursa K. Le Guin. Now, if you're not familiar with this book, uh, it was written in the 1960s, and it's part of a series of six books. Now, these are kind of basically made her career as far as that goes, and because it became a very popular series of books. There's even a animated movie out there. I wish there were more movies. This is this is one of these series that you wish like there would be like a uh, like Peter Jackson or somebody along would come along and say, hey, let's make this into a, a nice big movie series. Okay. Now there's not a lot of giants or dragons or other there is there is some dragons. There is dragons, but there's not a lot of them. Um or, you know, it, it, it doesn't have, like, a huge a number of fantasy elements. Like, there's definitely magic in these stories, but there's it's not like, like a huge amount of fantasy elements uh, that you would see in other uh, high fantasy or epic fantasy stories. Uh, this is not an epic fantasy. Uh, it's definitely much more low-key. So, in, in, in some respect, it feels a bit more like sword and sorcery books. Um, so... It's very much about the small scale of stories. And this one is a origin story, which is why I'm going to compare it to these ones, because these are also all origin stories uh, by other authors, including myself. Uh, and it really comes a, becomes a case of when you're reading this, it's, it's very much the origin story for the character Jed, also known as Sparrowhawk. Okay, now Sparrowhawk, you know, a, a, as the cover implies, he's like, you know, the greatest sorcerer in all or Earthsea, but he wasn't always that. So he was, as, as the cover implies, a reckless youth at one point. And this is the story of how he basically, you know, starts off as this reckless youth and becomes wiser and smarter about how he does things. Now, how this goes, uh, this character starts in the island of Gaunt. Okay, here. Uh, and then he goes to, in the early chapters, he's basically just learning how to be, you know, do magic, uh, you know, from the very beginning. Okay. And from Gaunt, uh, he, you know, within Gaunt, he, he goes to this one uh, wizard called Ogion, who uh, starts teaching him. And then he realizes that he needs, like, a, a proper teacher uh, who can teach him a lot faster. And there he goes to Roke which is way down here. Uh, and then the two chapters, okay, so he's, you know, he starts off uh, the, the whole origin story as far as that goes, uh, and then he goes to Rope. Now, the, the two chapters here, where it's the, the School of Wizards and then the Loosing of the Shadow, that's where he's basically at the school. Uh, and those very much feel like Harry Potter, okay? Now, I say they feel like Harry Potter because Harry Potter is basically ripping off this book to some extent, okay? And it's not like this is the only time that this has ever happened. Back in the 1990s, I read a short story by Ursula K. Le Guin, and it was essentially a short story set in a wizard school. Um, and I was very fascinated by this idea of, like, a wizard school, and... I later ended up writing my own series of stories, the Lilith Bloodstone stories, where she starts off in wizard school. And then she doesn't really have a problem with tuition, but she does have a problem with, like, if she wants to do research, then research costs money. And she needs money to, to do that research. So she has to go adventuring to, in order to raise money to do research. Now, when you read those two chapters where Jed is at the wizard school... You, you realize where uh, the Harry Potter author got a lot of her ideas from. Like even like Draco Malfoy, where he comes from is a specific character in here where it's, it's obviously like that that is the character from which, uh, yeah, see it's right here, it's Jasper. Jasper is the character that Draco Malfoy is basically based off of. And it's, it's very obvious when you're reading this, like, oh, okay, so uh, Draco Malfoy is is Jasper, and Vetch is basically the equivalent 
of um, Harry's best friend, Ron. Okay. And so you're reading that and it basically only lasts the two chapters that it feels like a Harry Potter story in that respect. Uh, so you, you realize where she got this from in terms of influence. Because this, this this book predates Harry Potter for, by a good 30 years. Okay? And then I got influenced by the same thing um, back in the 1990s when I read the, you know that one short story. And then I ended up writing my little Bloodstone stories in the 2000s. And then around that same time, the Harry Potter kind of started coming out. So it, it, it makes you realize just how influential uh, some of these authors are. Now... Uh, Jed, Sparrowhawk, that whole thing. Uh, I do wish that a lot of these stories could be turned into movies. There is one movie currently like that's animated. It's the the Tales from Earthsea. Uh, it's it's an animated movie that they made uh, using uh, Japanese animators, and it, it's a very good uh, story within itself. Uh, I've seen it multiple times on Netflix, and. I definitely recommend read, watching that one as well, as well as reading it. I presume that the book is actually better. Um, but within this, the basic plot, without spoiling anything, is that here's a wizard who's, he starts off, you know, very proud of his abilities. And then he's humbled uh, because he accidentally releases this shadow creature. And the shadow creature he eventually has to hunt down and defeat. Uh, and that's, w within that is this whole journey of discovery for himself where he kind of is realizing like who he is and what he actually wants to be and becoming wiser during that process. So it sets it up for the, this, this young but wise character eventually becoming the greatest sorcerer in all of Earthsea. Um, but he has to go through that whole process first. Um, now the fact that this is all set up effectively is like short stories, like they're, they're chapters, but they, they kind of feel like individual short stories about the character, uh, during the process of, uh, becoming a more wise character. Uh, and that, that is kind of a situation that you see also in other similar books that follow the same format of where the first book, the origin story is essentially a group of short stories. Uh, the Amaro series, same deal. They're all basically short stories, okay? And it, it, it's it's f formatted kind of like it is a novel, that the, the short stories make sense chronologically. Same thing with my uh, my first Rathgar book. That's essentially started off as a group of short stories, and then I patched them together to make a novel. And the same thing with The Last Witch by Sapkowski. Same deal. They're all short stories. This one is officially an anthology, but when you read them together, it kind of does feel like a bit like a novel and a bit like an anthology. And that's the same thing with all of these books. All four books basically follow this sort of like a cross between an anthology on one side and a novel on the other side. So you can you can argue that they're basically both. Okay, so I really enjoyed the book. It is definitely a good book. And I, I, I'm thinking I might actually go to the library and get some of the other books. So I can read them and review them in the future. Um, I'm not sure I would actually buy all the books with this one. I don't know. Like, it wasn't terribly expensive. Like, I could just... It, it was... In Canada, it was $8.99. I don't think I actually paid $8.99. I think it was like $6.99 or something like that. It, it was not expensive to get this book. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a relatively small book in that respect. So it's not, you know, it's... You know, because it's it's really only two hundred fifty six pages long, and then there's the there is this afterward where the author explains like uh, how she originally got the idea and how she drew the map and the whole issue of the characters being darker skinned. So th this is the thing that comes up. Uh, all the characters are basically copper or brown, or you know sometimes darker skin and then the lighter skin characters that they you know sometimes encounter usually as depicted as bad guys are either from the far north or from karg the kargish isles which is on the map 
way over here. These are the Kargish Isles. Okay, so it's really only the far north and this this that you know they actually have lighter skin. Everywhere else, they either have like copper brown or black skin, and in that respect, let's just go back to that back section there where she's talking about it. Okay, let's see if I can find that real quick. Uh, no, she's there. There she's talking about Gandalf and Merlin. Yeah, because as she didn't want her wizard to be like that, uh, like this big old the old man with the the big beard. Okay, so he's young, and he's darker skinned. Now, when that came out on the covers, you know she want she want she wanted a book cover that 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 showed what. Jed or Sparrowhawk look like and a lot of the early artwork, you know, she describes it as like later lily white Jeds, okay? Uh, and then, you know, it wasn't until like Ruth Robbins painting uh, showed him with copper brown skin uh, that, you know, that she saw one that was like actually the, the, the one true cover, okay? Uh, and then yeah, so it, 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 it goes to show that, you know, it was the 1960s when she wrote this and she wanted a dark skinned character. So it's not like it's Afro fantasy because this is, she's definitely not drawing from uh, African stories in this, but she wanted to show something that was more multicultural. Now you want, you watch some of the movies and they're like, they're kind of in between. They're like, they're not really dark skinned. They're not really light skinned. It's sort of like in between. Uh, they don't really depict them as being dark skinned in the movie. Uh, so it would be interesting to see them do this as an actual movie and, and be like, okay, we're going to depict them all as dark skinned and let, not whitewash it. That would be interesting. Or if they made it a TV show, because that's the other way to do this. I think that uh, this could make a really good HBO style TV series uh, if somebody wanted to. And it is a case of just finding the right director and the producer just to, to say, okay, we're going to do this and we're going to have them, that most of the characters have dark skin and depict them the way the author intended. Okay. And I, I kind of wonder if that's maybe the reason why this hasn't already been made into a movie series. It's because a lot of producers don't want to do that. Yeah. Now, within this, this series is very influential and you would think that they would get a tv show or a or movie series eventually uh i think it i think this works better as a, a tv show uh because the individual stories within this feel more episodic to me um and it, it works well in that way if you tried to squeeze all this book into a single movie it's going to feel like you mashed it all together. Uh, that's my opinion. Um, it, it'd be like if you tried to make a, like a, a Game of Thrones movie as opposed to a Game of Thrones TV show. You, it doesn't work. It's too much stuff to put in there uh, all in one movie. It, you know, it, it'd have to be like an eight hour long movie <laughs> for it to make sense. Uh, yeah, it's just ridiculous. Anyway. Uh, I think that's all for now. Uh, it is a really good book. I definitely recommend people reading this. This, this is one of those classic uh, 1960s fantasy books. And it basically set forth the whole genre that came after Arids, where wizards didn't have to be old men like uh, Gandalf or Merlin. They could actually be a lot younger and be doing a variety of other things than uh, saving the world. Okay? Uh, he's not saving the world in this. He's fighting one shadow. That's, that's the main plot. Okay, all done. Uh, talk to you next time. Bye-bye.